What's up guys, somebody's gone here. This video is going to be how to use the replay mode within Fortnite. It's going to be super helpful because I know a lot of people like to use the replay mode. This video is going to be breaking it down, showing you the two different kinds of replays. We're going to go into the basics of replay mode, talk about controller versus keyboard and mouse on replay modes, then go into the different kinds of video options that are available within replays, and finally finish off with the different HUD options the F keys and some cool things that you could do with that and talk about what you can do with the map options. So hope you guys enjoy the video. If you do make sure to like, and subscribe, let's get right to it. So the first kind of replay mode is going to be a server replay. You can find those in the compete tab. And then if you click on, let's say Booga's late game tournament, go on event details and then click on the session leaderboard. You're going to find the leaderboard and you can even click on the match history. When you, click on the match history, you'll be able to see these different matches. And then you could just click and watch one of these replays. So you'll get in the game. And as you can see, you have the player, you have a full list of the players in the lobby. And then if you could skip ahead, you'll have complete control of the map and you can move around. You're not limited to any specific area, any specific player. In addition, you'll also be able to see loadout and the material count for these players. This is only specific to the tournament or server replays. The other type of replay is going to be your own replays that are saved natively on your computer. Typically there's the career tab, currently there's the rift tour, but bottom right corner you can see view career. This is what you would normally see when you click on the career tab, and then you click on replays, boom, pulls up a list of all your replays, and you can even upload different kinds of replays so you have a session ID from a server replay that you want to watch you could throw that ID right in here and it will take you to that and now we can go watch one of our own games let's just click on this one so just like the server re replays you have a list of the players in the lobby but what you can see here there's this small circle that represents the zone. Then there's a highlighted area, which represents the replay area. So your native replays aren't going to save everything that goes on in the map. If you're watching your own replays, you're only going to see an area about the size of third zone. Now, what does that mean? If you want to check out off spawn, if it's not a server replay, you're not going to be able to. You're only going to see the size of about slightly larger than a POI. And you're going to be able to jump from person to person if we go to my POV and you'll see that we also do not have the loadout or the material count here. You have the elims, but that's it. You're limited on the different kinds of information that you have. So I suggest if you want to watch tournament replays, make sure you're doing that through the compete tab instead of watching them on the native saved replays on your computer. Now let's talk about the different inputs and how they affect your replay mode. You can use keyboard and mouse, or you can use the controller. Both of them work. See, I got the controller here. I can move around. Same goes for the keyboard and mouse. Both of them have the ability to fully use replay mode. For me personally, I like keyboard and mouse better. There's just more keys. It's easier to navigate. And controller is limited, much like the controller inventory in-game, where you have to manually switch from one gun to the next same thing here you can't just automatically switch to the mode that you would like to be in with keyboard and mouse it's much easier much more seamless to do things like this the benefit of controller though is it is much more smooth with its movement again just like it is in game pretty smooth and easy to use the controller for some nice shots on the screen the only issue is again you're limited with your options on the controller all right now let's talk about the different uses so on keyboard and mouse you use the number keys one through five to switch through the different modes as you can see five is going to be your gameplay mode four is drone free these are the most useful in my opinion to use then on controller to switch modes you're going to use clicking down the right stick that switches through and it cycles through the different modes. Then we use the WASD keys to move around when you're in drone free. And then you click on the screen and drag if you want different angles and you want to rotate the camera. You could do right or left click. Both of them work. Now on controller, you use the left stick and 
then use the right stick to change the camera angle, pan, rotate, different things like that. And that will help you be able to get different shots. Most of the time, you're going to want to use drone free, space bar, or your A or triangle button. It depends on what controller you're using. But that will help you start the game and get it moving. Then we can see right here on the screen, there's a little speed that you can go. So you can go anywhere from point one speed all the way up to times four speed. And then there's multiple options in between. If you guys want to check it out, you'll be able to see the different speeds, what is useful, what is not. Eventually, you'll get used to watching the modes and the games faster, especially mid-game if you're VOD reviewing a game. You might want to move through more quickly. Then one of the cool things is on keyboard, the O and the I key are going to move from teammate to teammate. So if you want to switch from teammate POV, you just cycle through those. Then you also have the ability to switch completely. These keys or this little arrow key will change the player in total that you're watching and O and I will change the team that you're watching. So these will give you different perspectives if you want to watch from somebody else's perspective. Now let's talk about using drone free mode. So use WASD much like you would in game. Then Q is down, E goes up. That allows you to then get different angles. And let's say you want to go back to the original person, right? We're on drip xx right here i go back into drone free you press r to get back to the player this is super helpful because if you are watching a replay the replay continues to move forward your camera is going to get stuck where it was it could be way deep in storm so you just press r real quickly to get to the person that you want to watch and gives you a nice perspective back to that person. Cool. Now we got the basics down. We understand generally how to use the replay mode. Then in addition to the actual movement, different characters, different modes, obviously there's the play button, there's these skip buttons, and you can click on the timeline to get yourself into different parts of the game. You can go forwards or backwards. Either way, doesn't really matter. Now let's talk about the different visual options. We have the visual pieces here auto exposure this is not something i really screw with i leave this basically at one at all times the focal length you can change with your scroll wheel so again doesn't really need to be adjusted now here's something that i actually do like to use let's get closer so i can show you guys exactly what i'm talking about so we see the player outlines we can see different red yellow green in the background over here if we go back, click on this little camera thing, player outlines, it takes it off. I really like the player outlines, especially in stacked end games. It helps you understand where everyone's at. You can turn the storm effects on or off. If you don't really want to see where storm is, you just want to see what players are doing. I would recommend turning it off, but it is actually helpful, especially in moving zones to understand where the zone is. So you can see it from the player's perspective. Now, one thing I would recommend is turning the zone down. I like it somewhere around 20 to 30. You could also see the replay region. That is only in your own replays. Again, we see it got dark around it. So it shows us what we can see. Say we had more space, this wasn't the Booga LTM mode. You would actually not be able to see outside of this dark ring. Now, again, I like that off. It's not very visually appearing. Uh, high quality FX, if you don't really care about the quality, I do because I do a lot of recording. I leave that on. Damage effects, so this is when someone gets shot. You get to see all the damage. Not the best, not the worst. Again, it depends on what you're using. You could turn it on. You could leave it off. Doesn't really matter to me. I like it off because it gives away too much. And as we see here... You'll start to see the damage come through. Again, depends. If you're in gameplay, you're not in drone free, then you'll see the damage anyway. So it doesn't really matter if this is on. These two, I don't really bother with. The session ID watermark isn't a big deal. It's just in this bottom right corner. Tells you the replay that you're watching. I leave it on. Now this last one. 
somewhat important. So team nameplates, that's going to be these nameplates that you see up here. I like to leave that on so I could see quickly as far as who is who. But you can turn that off and then all these options go away. The squad ID, I like to leave that on because it shows you, we see this 15, every team is going to then be given a number and a color. That way you can easily identify them. Now, this is going to be the different people that we see with their names, right? And so the arrow distance isn't super important to me. I like to leave that fairly low and as well as the low detail distance, the off distance. This is the important one as it's going to show you how many players and what distance. I like to leave this somewhere around 50 to 100 because I don't want names popping up all over the place. If I'm focusing in on an area, I want that to be the main focus. Now we also have the adjust scaling. You can leave that off. Doesn't really matter. Again, these are more advanced pieces that you could leave or not leave. It's up to you. Play around with these. This is, again, something that, see, not really super important. It's really just the size of the names, and then these start to change some of the arrows and different thing, things like that. I don't think it's super important. I'll leave it as is, but those are the different options that you could scroll through and help use during replay mode. All right, now we've kind of covered everything, but there's still a few more pieces. So like I said, one through four give us different options as far as the player that we're looking at. Four is going to be drone free. Five is the gameplay. Recommend using these two. Personally, I don't really use a ton of anything else. Then another cool thing is you see the names pop up. You can click on the name. We'll bring you to this character. Nice. I'm um, not sweet. Love this. Uh, great example to show here as it's quite realistic. The other piece is your HUD options. What you want to do is press H to change your HUD options. You can go just what you would see in a normal broadcast replay with all this open you could just see the timeline the x is going to be a death the exclamation point is going to be a knock and then there's little targets i didn't get any elims little targets are going to be eliminations those will tell you when you're eliminated now some other cool things are the f keys there's not a ton that you could do with these, but the F keys have some different options. So F7 is going to give you the match stats. F6 is going to turn on the elimination feed or turn it off. If I have it on, see in the top left corner, we see the elimination feed. I press F6, it turns it off. F8 is going to give you the scoreboard, shows you the eliminations per team, the health of the teams. You can also find similar information here on the map. But it's not going to be organized by team unless you click that. Now another thing, while we have the map open, you could scroll with the map, use right click to move around. You could click on the different players on the map. And you can also sort it by player names, you could sort it by team, or you could sort it by eliminations, and then you could also sort it by points. This is not a tournament replay, so there are no points, therefore nothing really to sort by. Now, one of the cool things on the map, you could scroll in, you could see the names. Once it gets to these stacked end games, kind of hard to see what's going on. So I like to leave it slightly scrolled out so you don't see the names, but you can see the arrows. Now, that's really it.